Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will be covering chapter 2, which is the recording process. Let me see if I could pull up the presentation. Here it is. And let's start the slideshow. So let's begin by briefly reviewing what was covered in chapter 1, which was the accounting um, in action. And the first objective that was um, covered was to identify the activities related to the accounting um, process, which were three. There were to identify an economic event, record the event, and communicate the event. Remember that there are two types of accounting users, including internal users, such as managers and CEOs, and external users such as investors and creditors. The second objective was to explain the building blocks of accounting, ethics, principles, and assumptions. In terms of ethics, we covered the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. We saw a video in relation to that. And we learned about GAAP, which are generally accepted accounting principles. We learned about uh, the Financial Accounting Standard Board and the Securities and Exchange Commission. And we also covered the historical cost principle where you record the value of a property, for example, at the price that it was purchased. And the fair value principle where the value recorded changes depending on the current value which can fluctuate. Now the two assumptions um, in accounting, remember that it is the monetary unit assumption where you only record the transaction that relates to money and the econ economic entity assumption where the owner separates personal transactions from the business. This is the accounting equation that we will work with uh, for the remainder of the semester. We cover the basic accounting equation which is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity and the expanded equation which is assets equals liabilities uh, plus owner's capital minus owner's drawings plus revenues minus expenses. We analyzed uh, transactions and recorded them in tabular form just like you see here. And we did that by identifying at least two accounts that were affected by the transaction that we were analyzing and by making sure that the ending balance were equal to each other or, to, or they were equal to the, um, based on the accounting equation equals, uh, that which was assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. The last objective I did not cover in last week's lecture, I will cover it today, which are the four financial statements. <laughs> and we have four financial statements, which are income statement, owner's equity statement, balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. In the income statement, as you see in this visual, it represents the revenues and the expenses for a specific period of time. So we have the revenues up here and the expenses. It is very straightforward and it shows that the revenue uh, shows the revenues for a specific month or a quarter in this case is for the month ended September 30th, uh, 2017. The second piece of information is the list of expenses, which is right here. In this case, uh, the list consists of salaries and wages, rent, advertising, and utilities. Then you sum up the expenses and you determine the net income, which is right down here, or the net loss. If you are making money after you pay your expenses, then you, you will have a net income, as in this case, which is $2,750. If not, then you will be reporting this as a net loss, and so this title instead of net income will be net loss, and then you would put the amount that you are reporting as net loss. Now the owner's equity statement summarizes the changes in owner's equity for a specific period of time. Remember that owner's equity is what the owner can claim once all liabilities have been paid. So for this statement, 
in which is also for the month ended uh September 30th, 2017. We report how much money was in the account on day one. See, we have owner's capital on September 1st. There was zero dollars in the account. And then we add any investments. Remember that in your homework assignment, you added an investment uh, because you were going to invest your own money into the business. This is what this represents, is 15000 And then you add the net income from the income statement. And as you can see from this arrow, you see how the income statement relates to the owner's equity statement. You will just grab that net income or net loss and you will transfer it to this line. Um, then you subtract any drawings. Remember that an owner can draw money to pay himself or herself for the month to pay the, uh, personal bills. And so these will be drawings that were made by the business owner to determine the owner's capital at the end of the month. So you would report him here. And so at the end of the month, uh, you will see that uh, in, uh, the um, owner's capital is now $16,450 versus at the beginning of the month, which was zero. Now, let me see if I can get out of here so I can show you this full picture because it's not all there. It's going to cut off. Uh, what happened here? Right here. I'm going to try and blow this up. You see the balance sheet here? The balance sheet shows the assets liabilities and owner's equity in two categories. This is in relation to a uh, to the basic accounting equation. And this is not for a specific period. In this case, it's for a specific date. It's for the day of September 30th, 2017. Now, the other two statements that we just talked about reported activity for a period for the month of September. And this could be a month of September, uh, I mean a particular month in the calendar year, or it could be a quarter statement. But just remember that for the balance sheet, is is based on a specific day. Now you report all of your accounts under assets. Remember, you we've been working with four accounts so far. Cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and equipment. So you report all of your balances there, and you add them all up to determine your total assets. Okay? Then you list the liabilities and owner's equity right here to determine that total. So you're going to put in your um, category liabilities and any accounts that are under there. You're going to see that right now we're working with accounts payable, and then all of your categories under owner's equity, which in this case is owner's capital. Okay, and you determine the, the, the total, and as you can see, it follows the accounting equation assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So that will tell you that these two numbers need to be equal, okay? Now, um, they must be equal, otherwise something is wrong, okay? The last statement... Oh, and also, too, you notice that owner's capital, you already determined that up in owner's equity, so that is in relation there. So every time you have to do a balance sheet and you have to um, draw in your owner's act capital and you've done your owner's statement beforehand, just make sure you drop that value down here so you don't have to um, redetermine that. Now, the statement of cash flows is the last one. And this reports information about cash receipts or cash inflows and cash payments or cash outflows. This is reported in three categories and you can see it here. Um, you have the cash flows from operating activities, you have the cash flows from investing activities, and you have the cash flows from financing activities. And the goal of this document is to report the cash flow at the end of a period. In this case, it's also the month ended on September 30th, 2017, okay? And you report that down here. 
So notice that all of these statements except the balance, the balance statement, the balance sheet is the only one that reports for a specific period. The rest of them, um, I mean for a specific date, the rest of them uh, report on a specific period. Okay. And that is all we learned in chapter one. Let's go back here. So you learn in chapter one how to analyze business transactions in terms of the accounting equation. And you learn to present the effects in tabular form. Okay, so let's go back. Now, um, the tabular format that you learn in chapter one is a basic way of recording accounting transactions um, and can be a method that you can adopt if you have a small business. However, ask yourself this, what about if your business is growing and the number of transactions per day are in the hundreds or even thousands? Do you think that the tabular form will be a method that will be practical for you to follow on a daily basis? Well, if you were in person, I hope you will say no because this method is very time consuming. So in this chapter, chapter two, we'll introduce you to the recording process, which streamlines the tracking of transaction data. Um, in chapter one, you learn that there are several accounts within the parts of the accounting equation. Remember, for example, assets, you had the cash, you had the supplies, you had the equipment. All those were accounts within the accounting equation. So here we, re we review what is an account. An account is an individual accounting record of increases or decreases in a specific asset, liability, or owner's equity. And an account consists of three parts, as the visual shows here. You have the title, you have a left or debit side, and the right or credit side. We refer to this illustration as the T account, simply because the format resembles a T right here. You see this T. Now you ask yourself what are debits and what are credits? Well many of you may think of a debit as a minus, a decrease, or a negative number, while a credit is a plus, an increase, or a positive number. This concept seems logical when dealing with your checking or savings account. But this is not the case in accounting. Debit does not mean decrease and credit does not mean increase. Okay, as you can see from this visual, debits and credits both increase and decrease depending on which account you are dealing with. Notice that here assets, if you want to increase, it's a debit and if you want to decrease, it's a credit. But in liabilities, if you want to decrease a liability, it's a debit. And if you want to increase a liability, it's a credit. Notice that it's different for the rest of the accounts too. So what is the point of this? I need you to erase that debit means um, negative and credit means positive. I need you to erase that from your brain. And only remember that debit equal is the left side and the credit is the right side of the account. That is it. Debit is left, credit is right, left for debit, right for credit. Now also please note that debit is abbreviated as DR and credit is abbreviated as CR. Okay. Now to show you visually and relate this concept with the tabular form that you learned in, in chapter one, let's look at this visual. I brought back the, the uh, rules for debit and credits on the accounting equation. That's just for you to visualize this, but let's focus on this visual down here. One of your asset accounts is cash, correct? If you remember from your homework, you invested some money to open a business. In this visual, it shows an investment of $15,000 in cash. Okay, now look at your debit credit rules under assets because cash is part of assets. 
When you want to increase the cash account, you do so by debiting. You see that there's a plus sign under the debit. You do you increase the cash account by debiting the T account. So translating this information from tabular form to the accounting form, we document this $15,000 on the left side of the T account or a debit. Notice that your credit, your debit and credit rules show this T account for assets, and this is the T account for cash. You want to increase money, you debit it. You want to decrease money, you credit. Okay. Now let's say that this seven thousand dollars. You notice it's a minus. It represents seven thousand dollars worth of equipment that you purchased in cash. This means that your cash account was decreased by seven thousand. Correct. Looking into the debit and credit credit rules for assets, when you decrease the cash account, you credit the T account. You see that? So translating this information from tabular form to account form, we document the seven thousand on the right side of the T account or the credit side. Okay. Similarly, we continue this process depending if the cash is withdrawn or deposited into the account. You see all these here represents you deposited 15,000, you minus 7,000, you deposit 1,200, you deposit 1,500, you depo and then you minus 1,700. And all that is going to be recorded on the, on the T account for cash as it either debit or credit depending if it's increasing the account or decreasing the account. Okay, now notice that we have a balance of 8,050. After all of these transactions are recorded, we have a positive balance for cash, right? Or if this is an asset in general. We say that we have a debit balance, okay? Debit balance because it's a positive number, so it's on the debit side. A credit balance is when the credit amounts exceeds the debits, okay? All right, so now the visual for debit and credit rules will be your best friend. For this semester. Until you memorize this chart, I suggest that you keep this visual close to you when completing your homework. And before you know it, the information on this chart will become second nature to you. But until then, just follow the rules and you will do just fine with the homework assignments. Okay, now notice under liabilities that the rules are opposite from assets. Remember that liabilities are your credit cards or your bank loans. When you charge a debt on your credit card, your credit card balance increases, correct? So, well, when you record this transaction, you are giving a credit to your liability. Notice that in order to increase a balance on your, on your liabilities, you have to credit that. Okay? And when you decide to make a payment on your credit card, your balance will decrease, right? Usually your statement comes in that you made a payment and so your balance is now lower. Well, in order to decrease your liability, you need to debit. You see how there's a minus here. Also not notice that the rules change for owner's equity. You see these? All these are for owner's equity. Depending on the account that you are working on will depend if you debit or credit and it will depend if you want to increase or decrease your account. Okay, uh, let's, we already covered that, so let's go into uh, what's next in, in the accounting recording process. Another step in the accounting recording process is journalizing. Keeping a journal is what most people use in the recording process. It is referred to as the book of original entry. And give me one second here. I have the phone ringing.